Molt bé, bona tarda a tothom. He començat en català, perquè avui és el dia internacional o europeu de les llengües, però no patiu, que intentaré seguir en anglès. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Open University of Catalonia, here in Barcelona. Also, welcome to our guest speaker, David, Professor David Singleton, and also with and also to uh, our director of the Speak Ups project, European project, uh, Christine Appel. She is a professor of our university, Open University of Catalonia. I think this is a, today is a very nice and good day to present this, 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 the outcomes of this uh, project, the Speak Ups project, because today is the European Day of Languages. For us, for uh, Catalan people, as you know, this is uh, also a special day because as you can, as you know also, to, as you can imagine, it's very difficult to, or not, I think it's very interesting to have two languages or more in this country and, and try to teach uh, and, and try to improve uh, the, 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 the skills of the different languages in, in our educational system. And, and I think it's very important for us uh, also as a people, in order to respect and recognize uh, the cultural difference and the, the cultural values of the languages in this very big uh, space <coughs> like is Europe. The Speak Ups project is one of the most important and also interesting uh, European projects for us. As you know, we are the coordinators of these projects, but uh, I would like to say also Welcome to the people that is in another parts of Europe in this moment connected with uh, here in Barcelona, especially with the universities that is participating with us in this project. University of Groningen in Netherlands, Dublin City University in Ireland, Jagiellonian University in Krakow, Poland, and the University of Uvascula, I think, <laughs> in Finland. Thank you very much. Uh, and I think uh, we uh, work together and with a very interesting, uh, this interesting projects and, and having a, a nice and also important outcomes from this project that you can see during the, this, uh, this event of today. For us, uh, for Open University of Catalonia, as you know, it was, uh, the languages was also one of the important key issues from the beginning in this university. We started in 1995, we started as online university, and also we decided also to put uh, languages in our degrees as uh, mandatory uh, in our curricula. It was an important difference related with the other universities in this country, and also it was a very big challenge for us because we decided to, to implement this university online. But the challenge, I think, is one of the more, in my point of view, as a, uh, as a educator of, from the pedagogical point of view, I think is one of the most interesting, uh, the analyze the evolution in this university. I think the people that work uh, in the, I don't know in English, didactica, as, um, the, uh, sir? Education. Education? No, no, but the, the, uh, like the, the, the pedagogy of the languages, the way that the languages uh, teach, you know, I think it's, you are the very, the people that uh, usually have uh, very good skills and very good, uh, very interesting ways that, and also usually work together and put together your uh, results. And it's a very interesting community because I came from a, from a primary and secondary school and I know very well these areas and I think, uh, to me, always was an in interesting participate from the pedagogical point of view with, uh, with uh, people of the area of the languages. Here at the work, um, and as I said, uh, was very important for us the use, uh, to put the languages in the curriculum of uh, our degrees and also uh, work uh, in order to, to have a good uh, teaching and speaking skills for our students in order to improve the languages skills and have the, 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 the results that related with the European uh, framework of the languages, etc. No? And, and also we are very proud because 
three years ago or four years ago, we decided to create three years, no? they create the School of Languages of Work. And now in this moment, we have more than 8,000 uh, students registered on uh, different languages in our School of Languages. I think that's it's very important for us and, and also an, uh, an idea that, that, that kind of uh, things it's uh, important for this university. No? Well, this project, um, I think, also works uh, in these skills, in language skills in English and in Dutch, in Swedish, in Polish, in Irish, and, of course, in Catalan, too. I think it could be very useful for different educators that participate in this project. I think I have nothing more to say, only to say thank you for the people, uh, especially the people of the Walk Language School, because it's very engaged in this project, and also for the people of our Office of Learning Technologies that helps uh, also people of uh, faculty in, in language schools in order to work in this, in this Speak Ups project. No? Thank you very much, and enjoy the city, and also enjoy this, uh, this workshop. And now? Yes, so, um, right, so um, it is with great pleasure that uh, I introduce uh, Professor David Singleton to, to everybody. Uh, David, thank you so much for accepting uh, our, the invitation uh, to join us. As you probably already all know, David is a worldwide, worldwide known He's an expert in uh, language acquisition. He's done work in cross-linguistic influence in second language acquisition processing, second language mental lexicon, and age-related factors in second language acquisition, among other things. I'm trying to summarize because it's very difficult to summarize everything you've done, David. So just to mention a few things, he's the editor of the second language acquisition series in Multilingual Matters. And the title of, of your last book, uh, Multilingualism, written with Larissa Ronan, is, uh, couldn't be more fitting for, for today, the European Day of Languages. Um, you can find all this information in Google. People who haven't met David don't know that David is also the kindest, and I like to say intellectually generous person. Um, he's always very approachable, to anybody, whatever your rank is in the university. I should know, because I was your undergraduate student and postgraduate student later on. And uh, you have inspired uh, many of us. I know that many of the people I, I studied with have gone on to do postgraduate studies and are all around the world working on the developments of language acquisition and and language teaching. So thank you so much, David, for your contribution and for being here today with us. Please join me in welcoming David Singleton with us. Um, thank you very much for those kind words, Christine. Uh, you brought tears to my eyes. <laughs> Seriously. Now, um, can I, uh, how do I do this? How does this work? First of all, I want to say how glad I am to be here. Um, I'm very grateful to be, have been invited. I know Barcelona a bit. I have some other colleagues in here. I, I, I have a second cousin actually living in Barcelona now, so um, I, I seem, I'm sort of connected with my family too down to Barcelona, so I'm very pleased to be. Uh, it's a wonderful city in all kinds of ways, and, and I'm very happy to be here. And I'm, 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 I was very touched to receive the invitation to, to this event, and uh, I want to thank you all for making that possible, my visit possible. Now, if I can get this into work. Um, oh, yeah, okay. I, I'm going to talk today about... Uh, by the way, I haven't got a watch here. So can you give me give me some times uh, when I should start thinking about drawing conclusions? Right. Um, I'm going to talk some about some aspects of uh, attainment in second language acquisition, which you're all concerned with, of course. 
and, uh, and I'm going to explore their relationship um, with the notion of the so-called critical period for... Uh, right, better? Yes, sorry. With the notion of the so-called critical period for language acquisition. You know, probably you've heard about the critical period hypothesis. This is a, this is a hypothesis which claims that at a particular point in our development, okay, a guillotine comes down and language acquisition becomes abruptly more difficult. Okay? And this is, a, this is an idea that's been around for a long time, uh, since the 1960s, even earlier. And this idea has dominated the scene in discussion of differences uh, between second language acquirers. People think, but think it's all about age. Uh, to, I think to a, a quite ridiculous degree, people have focused on this particular aspect. And quite a lot of researchers now uh, in the field are calling for other dimensions than maturation to be taken into consideration. Okay. Other, I mean, I'm, uh, we'll come back to that. If you want to talk about maturation in the discussion, I'm not going to focus on it. I'm not, I, I have a, my own views about the critical period, which some of you may know. I'm, I'm a skeptic about the critical period, okay? But we can come back to that. But what everyone, I think, now agrees is that we have to think about other things as well. Okay? Whatever the role of maturation, there's more at stake than, than, than just age. Uh, Quite a lot of um, people have been exploring factors with, which have more to do with the language acquirer's uh, experience of the L2 and or of his or her life in general than with maturational constraints. We'll see that, you know, who your partner is is probably more important than what age you started learning the language in question, you know. So... Some of these factors uh, we'll talk a little bit about today. Okay? One, one, one factor is the, the circumstances under which the second language acquirer encounters the, the target language. Okay? Do, you, do you encounter it uh, in, in a naturalistic situation, you know, living in a country? Do you encounter it uh, as, a, an, as a migrant, for example? Do you encounter it in school, encounter it uh, uh, because of somebody you met at a party? <laughs> You know, there are all kinds of circumstances in which you can encounter uh, a second language. Another factor is the quantity and quality of L2 input to which you have access. That, that, it, that's obvious, I suppose, but it, uh, that, that particular dimension of things has tended to be downplayed somewhat uh, because people are so obsessed with the age factor. A third is the affective dimension of the acquirer's interaction with the L2. Do you like the L2? Do you like speaking? Do you like learning? Do you like the people that you, you, the, the, you know you're encountering in, in, in this process? Teachers and also native speakers. You know, it's, these are obvious things, but they tend to not have been talked about enough because people have still been so concerned with the age factor. Now. Um, we know um, that throughout Europe, throughout the world, people are starting to learn foreign languages, second languages, in the primary school these days. And this seems to be based uh, on, on a widespread notion that because in a naturalistic environment, you, you can see that children do better than adults in the long run. Okay, so a migrant situation, for example. The, the, the children of migrants are translating and interpreting for their parents after a few years in the country. So it looks like children are better out than adults. Okay? We can talk about that as well. It's, uh, we don't hear so much about what happens to the migrant's own language in those circumstances. You know, that's, that's another dimension. But anyway, um, there are... It is, it's true that... In the naturalistic environment, the younger, the younger you start, the, the, the better in the long run. Okay, that is, that is clear. Um, and people have assumed this will ha apply to the school situation as well. 